Now, how many, I know uh, it's very fashionable not to shave anymore, but I see a couple of kind of clean shaven, other than my friend Massimo in the back of the room. I think only Massimo and I are the guys without any stubble on our faces, right? Yeah. So maybe this is not the right case study, but let's try it anyway, okay? <laughs> maybe there was a point when you did shave before it became cool to have stubble, okay? Or to have a beard. But does everyone know the Gillette Company? This is the dominant shaving company, okay? In 1901, a man by the name of King, K-I-N-G Gillette, right? his parents, they weren't Italian, but he was like the prince of his family, so they called him King, okay? The firstborn son. And Gillette, at that time, saw the way that men shaved. In that era, they shaved with a straight razor, right? Now, a straight razor is a dangerous tool. It can be used as a weapon, and to do to shave with a straight razor requires a lot of care. So many men would cut their face up to shreds every day as they tried to look nice before they went out. And Gillette came up with this idea of a safety razor, okay? And in 1901, the idea of a safety razor made men look like sissies, okay? Real men shaved with straight razors. So they thought that this was a crazy idea. But of course, he had the last laugh. Because what he wound up doing is building a multi-billion dollar company. And not that different than Blockbuster. It was the dominant men's razor and razor blade company. And he sold this company to Gillette, I mean to Procter & Gamble, for tens of billions of dollars, okay? Tens of billions of dollars. Now, other than inventing the safety razor, which was a pretty big accomplishment, if anyone had done something like that, your, your parents would be very proud of you. What else did Mr. Gillette invent? Something very, very important. And it's not necessarily a physical device. What else did he create? Think about the product he's selling, okay? What is he selling? Razors and razor blades. So make the logical extension. What did he create? Let me ask you a question. When you buy an espresso machine, how many people have espresso machines? Okay. So how would you describe the way that Nespresso sells their products? How is the espresso, the espresso machine very expensive? Is it an expensive machine? Where does Nespresso make their money? On the pods, right? On the pods, right? Oh my God, you want to have a cup of espresso? That's going to cost you, okay? Now, how many people have a printer? In here? A, a computer printer, okay? Where do the printer companies make their money? Ink. The printer is cheap. The ink is expensive, okay? So you, you start to pick up where I'm going with this? What do we call this business model? Come on. What do we call it? The razor, razor blade business model, okay? So Mr. Gillette created Luigi. I'm a disappointed, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's the razor, razor blade business model, okay? And it's been replicated in computer printers and medical equipment. It's been replicated time and again all around the globe. When I was working at McKinsey, I know this is going to sound crazy, but aircraft engine companies, one of my clients was the Pratt & Whitney Aircraft Engine Company. They compete with Rolls-Royce and GE. Believe it or not, a jet engine is sold in a razor, razor blade fashion. Now, why do you think a $5 million heavily engineered um, jet engine would be sold at cost? What, what are, how crazy do people have to be to give a jet engine away at cost? What's working? Why, what's the logic behind why you would use a razor, razor blade model? Mateo, come on, you know. You have to sell more. Like, in order to get more people to buy it, it's a the lower cost possible, and then they just make sure to make money out of every thing possible. It's exactly right, okay? So what happens is when you, when you bolt a jet engine on a 747, it's not like some simple temporary thing. It's on that jet, it's on that 747 for the rest of its life, for the rest of its natural life. So the minute that you lock into a, an airplane fuselage and you're bolted onto the wing, you have 30 or 40 years worth of high profit spare parts business, very high margin business. 
So the reason I mention all this is because here's this company named Gillette. Not only did they invent the safety razor, they invented the most widely used business model in history. And then this happened, okay? And they were not counting on this. But then again, that's what happened to Blockbuster. They weren't counting on it either, were they? And it was too late when they finally figured it out. Founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is Dollar Shave? Hi, I'm Mike. Founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades and aloe vera lubricating strip and a pivot head. It's so gentle, the toddler can use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. Mm -hmm. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and 10 blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Look good, Papa! Stop paying for shave tank you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. All 100 and I are going to ship them right to you. We're not just selling razors. We're also making new jobs. Alejandro, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're going to stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are DollarShaveClub.com, and the party is on.